After pulling away late against South Florida, Alabama and Jalen Milrow came back and destroyed the Wisconsin Badgers on Saturday. Is his upside just too much to ignore for these NFL GMs and head coaches? Let's dig into the tape and talk about the things that Jalen Milrow already does extremely well. Some of the things that he does need to improve upon. This is week three in a new offense with Kalen DeBoer, you know, pulling the levers and everything like that. But we have a ton of information about Jalen Milrow. And this is one of the things that he does extremely well. He's got a quarterback draw here. Does a really nice job again of just setting his eyes downfield, forcing those defensive players back. And then when he gets into space, he reads it extremely well there. You know, learn to slide a little bit at times, I think will definitely help in some of these regards where you're trying to protect your body. But this is 6'2". 220 pounds moving very well i do think he's making more of an attempt to get himself out of the way but again really nice job of selling the fake initially good posture you want those defenders to think you're going to throw the football and then you got the draw clear out from a couple of blockers making guys in, in miss in space and then out there and then this is a really nice job of executing the read option when he sees number eight job uh, you get down the line there kind of anticipating the handoff he takes it and pulls and then he just pulls away and when you try to tackle him you have to bring your entire body wrap up or he's going to absolutely bowl you over and again i just like the patience here he waits and waits and waits and you've got again the linebacker scraping across with the movement from the tight end who was in motion on this play and then number eight just gets a little bit with his you know his hand caught in the cookie jar a little bit there coming down on the line and Jalen's like yeah I'll take that and we're gonna make a big play like I said watch number two out here who's gonna get leveled just kind of uh, you want to want to definitely want to wrap up there not just come off the block late because he's going to rip apart arm tackles at this level of football regardless of where you play he's too big he's too fast and he's super strong to be able to do that so we already know that he's a legitimate running threat with six rushing touchdowns on the season but we do need to see him improve as a passer really more of a game managing reading quarterback at the collegiate level to be able to make it to the nfl level here you've got uh, the orbit motion from left to right for number three and he's just kind of like sitting in the pocket obviously you've got three man rushes but wisconsin made it easy on Jalen Murrow in this offense and when you get the ball into the flat like this it's really easy to make everything happen so he's looking on the left hand side of the offense initially you have a two-man concept with number three again going into that motion to the opposite side he's going to take it to the flat and there's going to be nobody within 10 yards of him essentially and then you're going to have a switch a switch release out of this stack formation apex receiver is going to come out and then go up the field and take this to the post the underneath receiver is going to come inside around again that switch release and come out to the just to take the out to the left hand side and Wisconsin does a good job of forming a triangle on the def on the offense right here with two receivers to the left hand side and again pretty much a max protect right here with all the other players just three receivers going into a motion you've got the triangle from the defense on this side so you've got one two and you've got three make it pretty easy to get those players done my concern with this is that you see three defenders, you see two players out there. Jalen Milrow needs to get his eyes off of that already. He needs to come down and deliver the football to the check down. Now, he's got so much time that it doesn't matter, but he read that play through far too slowly, and that's part of the process, part of what is going to make him an impactful player, I think, going into the next level where he's got to get – to the, the, the point where he's reading out defenses and reading his players. Like you see right here, he's one, two, three, four, four seconds on a two man concept with three players and three defenders in the way. You can't do that. When you have so much time, he could have taken off. You know, he could have gotten this out to the flat earlier. It still ends in a, in a positive play for, uh, for Alabama. But at the end of the day, you want to speed up the clock. Two-man concept should be pretty easy to read out. And when you see those defenders there, it shouldn't be that hard to get it through. And then this is really where we need to see him improve as well. We talk about going through reads, and, and this time he actually does go through the read. And, and they're actually going to get, I think what you really want on this play is the underneath route, the drag route option. So from top to bottom here, you've got an over route. Then the underneath receiver here is going to run a drag like I said, underneath here, this reduced split receiver is going to come up, try to stretch that defense vertically so you can get the underneath uh, the underneath receiver open. And the same thing is going to happen on this side where you've got the tight end coming out here, really just kind of fading away 
upfield and, and then you just watch the underneath routes come open really quickly when you have that vertical stretch boom right here Milrow's looking deep middle field first and then he comes down immediately he sees this he's now looking right here this is where you want throw the ball throw it now he's looking at it sees it it's open throw it and we get like two seconds late he ends up getting hit in the face the pass goes not where he wanted it to go and then we see how that that ends up unfolding there with an incompletion so the ball needs to come out a little bit quicker he's thinking a little bit too much and trying to see it and then throw it the problem here is that he sees it so he's got his eyes once again here eyes here and then they're going to come down you're going to see this receiver coming to the screen right there throw the football throw it now throw it now you got to throw it and he just he waits too long and then he gets pressure in the face he gets hit you can't be doing that. You have to speed up the process. So those are two things that he desperately needs to improve upon. This is where he needed to improve upon also coming into the season. And I think through three games, we're seeing more of an attempt to do some of this. Now, Wisconsin's going to come out and they play this single high safety shaded to the three receiver side, which makes a lot of sense. Milrow's going to do a nice job of holding him to the left and then throwing back to the right. Now, the receiver gets caught up, falls down. But it's the intention that we want. We want to focus on the intention. you got a choice route in the intermediate here. This is a choice route. You're going to see on the next play why I know it's a choice route. They run the exact same concept. And then you have fade and hitch on both sides. Fade and hitch. And this is just 100%. He's reading this player right here. And it's if he's on the center or middle left part of the field, okay. You can't get there. I'm going to throw it. And this is, I think, would have been a good placed, a well placed football again on the outside, allowing his receiver to go get it. But this is where you want to see him grow even more, continue to do this. You're not going to see a ton of single high in the NFL, but you see a lot of it throughout college football. They played tons of different coverages, trying to get what they want on those plays. And then, like I said, right on the next play, they come back. This is a touchdown to the receiver going up the field here. You got the hitch route right here. And then this time, the choice route is over the middle of the field. Then you have, again, the fade and the hitch. This time, he, <laughs> I think he got a little excited because he never looked at the middle of the field this time, but you still get the touchdown in between two defenders. So... You find the ball placement. A couple of things that our, our, our own Keith Sanchez said in his report, if you guys want to go check that out on the draftnetwork.com, feel free to do so to see what he says about Jalen Milrow coming into the season. Some of the things that he had to work on were the anticipation and the accuracy and placement. So right here, he, he just dials it in. He sees that that safety is single high, but he is shaded to the three receiver side once again. And now watch his eyes. We'll try to sell this down really quickly. So you can see that right there, he takes one hesitation glance to the middle of the field to make sure he probably should have done that first. But this is a well-placed football in between that defender and the safety coming over. So we have ball placement a little bit better. We have, again, knowing that this safety is shaded to the other side, he checks him and then throws the football. And it's a really nice touchdown play for Alabama. And this is going to be an incompletion, but I love the layered placement on this throw to the sideline and he takes it willingly the aggression definitely there i think that kaylin DeBoer has done a really nice job of playing to his strengths and this is another one of those concepts where you do a switch release so the outside receiver is going to come inside up and then take this to the corner the inside underneath receiver is going to release to the out to the flat so you've got flat and then the corner so when you're looking at the right hand side here he again he's doing a nice job of layering this throw so he's reading out the right hand and then he sees ideally you'd love to have this defender go quicker to number 80 to be able to open up the the right hand side a little bit more but i think he kind of played it really well played the eyes of Jalen milrow and ends up getting close but he does he layers this football behind that defender with a really well placed football obviously it's hard to really get it as pinpoint as you want to but Right there, calm in the pocket, not a lot of pressure. Something he didn't have to deal with very much in this game was pressure. And then just just that far away from this being a completion and being an excellent catch. So the aggression, I think the accuracy is getting better. The ball placement is was better in this game. He was far more comfortable. So how is he going to deal with pressure going forward? 
That's a question that we're going to have to get an answer to, and we absolutely will, given that the SEC is always full of really good pass rushers. So if I had to say one thing about Jalen Milrow coming out of this game that we don't necessarily have a ton of answers for, it's reading through his concepts quicker, you know, quicker and then dealing with pressure. Because if you can deal with pressure and read quickly, then that's going to make his life much, much easier. But this is another area that we talked about where the accuracy and the ball placement really make an impact. So it's a longer developing play. And, you know, Kalen DeBoer actually talked about this post game about how they needed a little bit more time and they had a lot more time. So it's a vertical stem and then you've got the post corner. And this is thrown with anticipation with Really nice, actually really nice anticipation on his part, considering what we know about him. So here's the football. He's ge gearing up to it. Throw right here. He's throwing this here. And he's already in his motion. Right here is where the receiver is. So we have actual anticipation. I think he is breaking to the corner at this point. He took it a little bit too far towards the receiver in terms of like he's getting about, he, excuse me, to, to the DB where he's now in conflict with him. But it doesn't matter because that DB is now moving backward and he doesn't have the speed to catch up so again really nice ball placement to the back corner of the end zone allowing his receiver to run underneath it and he threw it with time with timing and anticipation to be able to do so and again he's got time in the world I think that we saw a comfortable Jalen Milrow in this football game something we haven't always seen from him and so hopefully going forward the combining you know the running game with his ability to stand in the pocket which i think that when he's wanting to be and can make some of these throws and is comfortable he's going to be a far more productive player much like a lot of these talented players are so going forward let's see some more improvement in reading out his his reads getting the ball out a little bit quicker when you see the open receiver and then continuing to work on that anticipation and ball placement because we're seeing some improvements there so hopefully he continues this level of play because this is Heisman level type of play and numbers that he's putting up. And Jalen Milrow could find himself in the top 10, if not the top five, given how talented and raw he still kind of is. NFL teams love to play with quarterbacks like that. Just look at you know, Anthony Richardson, who was drafted in the top five out of Florida. So I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown. If you're new to the draft network, please hit the sub button for the channel. You guys can follow me on Twitter at In Harm's Way. 19. Don't forget to check out Keith Sanchez's breakdown of Jalen Milrow on thedraftnetwork.com. Please hit the like on the way out, and I'll see you guys next time.